Hey, this is Sarah from Halftone Digital, and today we're going to be making a new file in After Effects. So, for starters, when you hop into After Effects, you're going to be prompted with new project or open project, and today we're just going to be making a new project. The thing about projects is that it is the foundation of your entire file. So when you open up a file, it's opening up the project. And within the project, there's going to be compositions. And compositions are where the animations are going to lie. It's going to be our canvas, it's going to be where our assets are, our layers, our keyframes, all that good stuff. So we have the project open, but we don't have any compositions to work with yet. So we're going to make a new composition. And this is where we decide the size of the file. And so I'm gonna make this 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna name the composition something. So this is gonna be my main composition. I'm just gonna call it the foundation. And here there's a lot of different options for your file. You can decide on the frame rate, which is usually at 30. 30 and 60 are the most prevalent ones in the industry. Frame rate determines how many frames per second there are and so 30 frames per second is adequate for animation but 60 frames per second is better for fast-paced video footage so 30 is fine and resolution we're going to do full and for the time duration this whole format goes hours minutes seconds and so on and so forth since this is the start of our composition, we're gonna start at zero and the duration, I'm gonna have it set to five. And then the background color does not matter, but if you plan on having white animations, then you're probably gonna want a darker background so that you can see it. But that dark background, whatever background color we select here, won't show up in the final animation. So I'm gonna make mine a neutral gray, just in case. And then in advanced, we can get into that later because whatever you set up here, we can change it later. This can always be changed. And you can have a dozen compositions in your project file, all in different varying dimensions, timeframes, etc. So now we're in the interface. Great, amazing, we're here. Fantastic. We'll set the workspace to default, reset default. And you can see here, by selecting the tab up here, I was able to bring the composition into view. And so this is our viewport right here. And in our viewport, we are able to have multiple tabs open and usually multiple tabs are by default active whenever you double click on an asset, it isolates that asset and opens it up in a new viewport, but then you can always skip back to the composition there. Over here, we have the project assets panel here is where we keep all of our assets, but it's also the location of effects. So when we start getting into using effects in After Effects, those options and metrics will be stored in this window. And then you can like tab between the effects versus the project and so on and so forth. So when we import assets, they'll end up here. And you can see that our composition is technically considered an asset. And so if you accidentally exit out of the timeline for that asset, you can double click back in and it'll open it up on the timeline. And so you can think of compositions as groups because you can't group layers, but you can pre-compose layers. Pre-composing layers makes a new composition within the existing composition. Let's make a new solid. So now we have a new layer, and because this new layer is an asset, it's also added to the assets panel. Let's shrink it down, and then I'm gonna duplicate it. So we have the assets panel, and then down here we have the layers panel, and the layers panel is linear and stacked layers. And so what I mean by that is that all of the layers are stacked and they exist on a linear timeline and each bar represents a different layer. We're able to change, increase and decrease everything and we can get into the graph editor, which I have a video on the graph editor and the speed graph on a different video. Since we're not getting into keyframes today, we're just going over the interface. We have these two layers and we want to link them together in such a way that we're able to jump into that group, like isolate that group 
like how you would items in Illustrator. And so to do that, I'm gonna select both of them, right click and pre-compose, and then we'll call these asset one. By moving all attributes to the new composition, if say if we had a bunch of keyframes on these layers, those keyframes will be transferred to the new composition that we're making. And so here we go. We have the composition icon here, which we also have on the foundations, which is open right now, but asset one is not open. It is just existing on the foundation composition as just a regular layer. And so we can double click into that and see how it opened up a new comp tab. And then we have the two items that we technically grouped. Incredible. Say we want to bring in existing assets from the outside like on our computer. Then we go into our assets panel and I do command I, which is import, or you can go up to file, import file, and then search for your file that way. Perfect. And so now you can see we have a PNG in here and that PNG, you can see the size, which is 535 kilobytes. And then you can also see the frame rate in case it's a video footage. And then you can determine what type of frame rate that composition should be, etc. Fantastic. And so we've covered the assets panel. We've covered the timeline mostly. There are a lot more details to go over on the timeline, but for the sake of introducing you to After Effects, we're gonna get into the viewport a bit more. And so in this viewport, you can see that there are all of these options down here. To zoom in and zoom out, I just scroll down and then I scroll up to zoom in or command plus command minus. Those two work as well. If you remember at the beginning when we selected the background color, say we want to know where on our composition is transparent. The background color is in inhibiting us from viewing transparencies because of that. So in order to get a transparent background, you just go down to toggle transparency grid and then it gets rid of that initial background color, which also proves that the background color will not export when you export the file. If you want that gray background to show up when you export, then you have to create a solid layer that's gray and it'll export. You're getting into 3D animation, in which case it's always useful to have a two view viewport. And so this is viewing our canvas, our composition, from above and so this is from a completely different angle but since everything is two-dimensional it's just a line that we cannot see there's also another neat feature in after effects that allows you to view your layers in a grid formation and the way to do that or the way to enable it is to go to composition flowchart and here you can see we have our foundation composition and we can see that it's made out of and the only layer that we have in there is asset one, which is a pre-comp, which has its own layers. And so it takes you all the way through the layers. And so you can see your entire project from a flowchart standpoint. And moving on to our panels here. These are mostly advanced or for very specific purposes, but the most common panel you'll probably encounter is effects and presets. And these are the native effects and presets in After Effects that you can use. So there's like drop shadows, glow, light sweeps, text effects, and all of those sorts of visual effects. There's also the align section, which aligns objects to the composition. So you can see here, right, left, centered, etc. And then libraries to connect to your other Adobe libraries of assets, and then character for when you're getting into text, and paragraph for when you're also working with type in After Effects. And so now you have your effects and presets, align, and character and paragraph noted down. We're good to go in that department. Next, I want to go over the toolbar here. This is our primary selection tool, which you can use to grab layers even when you're not fiddling around in the timeline you can select objects just from the composition itself in the viewport and then we have the hand tool which is h and it lets us drag around the screen but another way to do that is to hold the space bar and drag around and then release the space bar we also have the zoom tool but again you can use command minus command plus 
scroll down, scroll up to zoom around on the screen. We have the rotation tool, but within each layer, if you hit R, the rotation is also there, so don't have to use the toolbar for that. Then we have the shapes, which you have to make sure that you don't have any layers selected when you're building a shape, or if you do have something selected and you use a shape tool, then it will mask that layer that you have selected. So make sure you're mindful of your purposes for the shape tool. And then we have the pen tool, which is similar to the shape tool. Say I don't have any layers selected and I use the pen tool, it will create a shape in that size. So now we have a new layer because I didn't have any layer selected when I started using the pen tool. Then we have the text tool, which is command T and the brush tool, command B, the clone stamp tool, command B, and the eraser tool, command B. The snapping feature is important because it allows layers to snap to one another. So now it's snapping to the grid, it's snapping to the items that are already on the composition, which is useful for when you're aligning things properly, because then you can combine snapping with the align section. So unchecking that so that it goes all free form. Okay, another thing to note about After Effects is that you can sometimes lose the layout outlines. And what I mean by that is when I hover over this, you can see the general sh rectangular shape that this layer takes up. You can see on the corners, there's that blue edge. And sometimes for whatever reason, they go away and you want them back for whatever reason. So I go up to view and I make sure that show layer controls is selected, which it is. And so if I deselect that, I have the black solid selected and I can move it around, but I can't see that it's highlighted the way that it used to be with the red outlines. So we're gonna show layer controls and now we got that all back. And this is also useful for when you start getting into keyframes. Like as you can see here, I have a keyframe line going, so it moves. And it's really useful to be able to see this line because if you get into using the pen tool to manipulate those lines, you wanna be able to see that line when you're manipulating it. See how it curves? And without the layer controls, you can't see that important to have your layer controls on. And so that concludes the basics of the After Effects interface. I hope you learned something new, and if you didn't, let me know what you want to know in the comments below, and I can cover it to the best of my abilities. There's a lot to go over in After Effects, and I think everyone should be able to try their hand at it, and it can be a bit of a steep learning curve, so I want to help you guys out. All right. Have a nice day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.